Are you ready? <laughs> well, I have been for nearly a year now. But, as they say, good things take time. And after all the speculation, the uh, one-time reporter in me avoids speculation, but as an ex and still sometime advertising photographer, I understand how these things work. <laughs> so, with this teaser of sorts, this countdown, Nikon is amping up the anticipation, but of what? The so far imaginary Z8, a lens or lenses, uh, software, the Z6 III, maybe a combination of all or some of those. I've had a chance this morning to peruse uh, the videos and live streams that have already debuted. Not unusual, because there's people like uh, <laughs> Matt Irwin who live in the future. Hey Matt, I noticed you stole my blue backlight. <laughs> and uh, Rishi, who no doubt kind of know what's coming before we do. So what might be coming? I don't know any more than I did when I made my single speculative video on the so far imaginary Z8 camera. And we'll have to wait another two weeks until the 10th of May. Excuse the dump truck going by. Um, we'll have to wait for more information from the only people who really know what's on offer. Nikon. And what then? Already there's a thousand theories. Has Nikon given us any clues? Well, the first standout to me is the video start button incorporated into the O of U. I don't think it's speculation to expect that whatever it is, it'll include some decent video specs if it's not completely video-centric. I mean, various Nikon executives have plainly stated over the last year or so, before and after the Z9, that video was going to be the focus of research and development. And the Z9 really has delivered on that front with RAW in both 4K ProRes and 8K Tico RAW, which is still the subject of legal contention as of now. I haven't heard anything on that front, but could this new camera, assuming we're talking about a camera, um, could it offer something new there with RAW? Whatever. I just can't wait to see what Nikon has in store in terms of video. I think, I think Matt said that we could be talking software. Sure. But then again, after all the anticipation and <laughs> frustration, I think Nikon has to release a new camera next month. Thinking video features. It may turn out to be the Z6 III. After all, the original Z6, of which I own two, used to record most of my videos here for the last uh, four years now, was marketed as a video-centric camera um, with uh, the, the, the inclusion of the filmmaker's kit. Um, that included the Atomos Ninja 5 monitor recorder to record 10-bit and with a factory update, ProRes RAW externally uh, over HDMI. Of course, with the Z9, we can do all that internally, and more. So I would imagine whatever is released next would match these functions. Maybe not for um, recording as long as the Z9. Not that I believe every rumor, but I did notice the purported leak that the Z8, if that's what we're talking about, will have a mixed carbon monocoque body. Now, as a former competitive cyclist, I know a thing or two about composites. And really, there's no doubt that there's nothing to worry about there in terms of uh, quality and strength. But I do wonder about heat dissipation. But I'm, I'm, I'm fairly confident that Nikon engineers could find a solution to that issue. Uh, I recall that Matt and I chatted last November, I think it was, about what compromises might be needed in a smaller body. Less recording time, lower resolution? What if Nikon has found a way to work around or overcome the kind of heat issues Canon ran into, at least initially, with the R5 and R6 
wouldn't it be uh, <laughs> cool <laughs> in the whatever it's called? Um, what if it, it met or exceeded those challenges? What if this camera, again, assuming it's a camera that we're talking about, recorded for over 30 minutes? I've got to say that with the Z9, that extended recording time really eliminates some of the anxiety of making longer videos, which <laughs> this one won't be. I notice that Ricci and other videos quoting him see a sort of eight disguised in the text of this teaser on the lower right corner. Hmm. Or is it just how the question mark ends up in the repeating graphical animation? To me, this seems in the territory of rumors about uh, Paul McCartney's untimely death, <laughs> except that that circulated around the number nine. Number nine, number nine. <laughs> what do you guys think? Uh, please do let me know in the comments. So at the end of the day, has the mythical Z8 moved from the land of um, unicorns to become Nikon's next best hybrid camera? I haven't mentioned stills. Um, maybe it won't even be a stills camera. We don't know. If it is a hybrid, I'd expect it to equal the Z9 in performance, mostly, perhaps not in burst speed. Like Matt, I'd expect the sensor to be fast enough to not exhibit rolling shutter distortion. Sensor size? Oh, here we go, another dump truck. I'm going with 4550 rather than 61. Though there's been speculation that whatever it is, Z8 or Z6 III, there might be two versions. One video-centric, one for stills. I'm not sure I really buy that idea. Here's my final prediction. The secrecy and speculation will be over in less than two weeks now, at precisely 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's what, um, 5 a.m. my time here on the West Coast, on May 10th. Of course, those future dwellers, <laughs> they're going to preempt the rest of us. But you'd better believe that I'm as excited as anyone to finally discover just what this new and exciting product turns out to be. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, swing by here on the 10th for my post-announcement thoughts. In the meantime, take care, cheers, and... Uh, We'll see you then, if not before. <laughs>